Praise the Lord and good Thursday morning to you. Greetings in the name of the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. I pray you are doing well. Hallelujah. And I pray you are filled with the joy and the peace of the Lord on this beautiful Thursday as I am. Well, hello. My name is Jamila Jordan Moody. I am your host for Throne Room Conversations, and I am truly thankful, honored, and overwhelmingly joyful and grateful to be um, back with you all. I apologize. I was not able to record um, or put any post up for the month of April as I was um, just taking time to heal and recover. It was taking a lot longer than I expected. So I had a little bit of a setback, but I am back. I am here and I want to just go right ahead and jump right into what I have to share with you all for today. Glory be to God. The last time that I was with you, we started our series. We were about to start our series on weapons of warfare. And um, as I was meditating on what I would share um, for you, um, excuse me, with you all, um, as <laughs> I return um, this thing that I'm about to share, this this word of encouragement I'm about to share, literally just um, dropped in my spirit um, as I was just thinking on what to share. And, and so I pray you are uh, encouraged by this as I am. Glory be to God. We're going to go to Psalm. 91. Glory be to God. Psalm 91. And I'm going to start reading that verse number one. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him. I will trust surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall shed, tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory be to God. Real quick, um, we've been talking about the weapons of our warfare. Amen. As we, um, glory be to God, share from the scripture. And I'm going to go there and I'll read it right quick for you. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. And I'm going to start reading that verse number 4. It says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalt itself against knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. And so as we've been talking about weapons of warfare, I um, wanted to start to discuss with you what that means and what that looks like in the realm of the spirit and what hallelujah kind of weapons are we to use amen if they're not carnal amen if we're not to use natural weapons if we're not to use natural things that we're used to, to doing like using our words to fight back at people or hurt people or harm people or clap back or uh, have a comeback as um, the young people would say amen nowadays um 
in order to do it according to the word and not according to our flesh, we have to get an understanding of what those weapons are. And one of the most powerful weapons I want to talk to you about today, the most powerful weapon you have in your arsenal is the presence of God. In this particular text of scripture, going back to Psalm 91, amen, in the first verse, it says, he who dwells in the secret place, that word secret from the original Hebrew is the word satar, meaning the covering, the hiding place, amen, the cover of the almighty, hallelujah. He who dwells in the secret place, hallelujah, he who dwells, who he who takes covering, in the secret place. My God, I thank you, Lord, for that right now. Um, it says here that they shall abide. And that word abide is the word loom from the original Hebrew, meaning to lodge or to pass the night, um, to remain in. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Shall remain in that hiding place. Shall pass the night in that hiding place. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Let, come on, let's continue on. Amen. It says, he who dwells in the uh, secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. Amen. Uh, the word shadow um, from the original Hebrew is the word um, shell. And the reason why I share these words and share the original meaning and understanding is to give you full um, context of what this word is saying, the deeper meaning and a deeper understanding of what the Spirit of the Lord um, is saying. Amen. Glory be to God. And so it says here that um, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, his presence. Amen. Hallelujah. His his keeping presence. Amen. Uh, the shadow, amen, the the um the, the thing that is cast over you, amen, like we cast shadows, amen, hallelujah, in the sun. And the one thing I wanted to point out here about being under his shadow is if you understand, amen, the purpose of shadows, glory be to God, um, shadows protect you from uh, the harmful rays of the sun. Um, the UV rays of the sun, amen. And UV rays are known to cause cancer. It can cause blindness. It can uh, has the power. It says UV photons have the power to destroy or damage your DNA. And so when you think about the shadow of God, this is what the shadow of God does for us in the realm of the spirit. It protects us from, hallelujah, the harmfulness, amen, of the realm of the spirit, the harmfulness, amen, of the enemy, the harmfulness um, that the enemy seeks to inflict upon us, amen. Uh, it protects, amen, the shadows and shadows, they protect us and they keep us cool um, in the sun. And so the, the, the presence of the Lord, it keeps us cool. It gives us peace, amen. Hallelujah. It keeps us from being dehydrated in the spirit. Amen. Because this is what uh, shadows do. They keep us from becoming dehydrated when it is intensely hot outside. And so the presence of the Lord keeps us from being dehydrated. Um, let me ask you a question, amen, if you have been going through a season where you feel like you have been so thirsty that nothing has been able to quench your thirst, where you have been feeling so dehydrated, not only in the spirit, but in the natural, it has uh, been so strong in the spirit, it has manifested in the natural for you, amen, um, the presence of the Lord, hallelujah, will protect you from dehydration in the spirit, it will keep you hydrated. Glory be to God. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. Shall, uh, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And then he goes on to say, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. Hallelujah. The Lord is my refuge or um, he is my uh, garrison. He is uh, my stronghold. This is what this word uh, refuge means from uh, the original Hebrew, glory be to God. Um, and so um, even before I go further, I want to stop and say this, going back to the point that uh, shadows uh, keep us from becoming dehydrated. What I want to do is encourage you today is to return to uh, the presence of the Lord. And I'm not talking about this religious understanding of God being there. I'm talking about really return to the place where you are so engrossed 
in his presence that you literally began, hallelujah, to feel your dehydration, hallelujah, be soothed and your thirst, amen, begins to be uh, quenched, hallelujah, and, and your hunger begins to, glory be to God, become satisfaction, a uh, return to the presence of the Lord, because that is the greatest weapon that you have, amen, in this war that we are warring, in this war we are entering into your most valuable weapon you have is the presence of the Lord, and so I want to encourage you this morning uh, to return to the place of your safety, because when he says, I will save the Lord, he is my refuge. Um, that word, amen, as I was saying before, uh, it means a garrison. It means a, a stronghold. Glory be to God. Um, we often talk about the stronghold of the enemy, but I wanted to let you know, amen, that the presence of the Lord, amen, the, the power of God, the word of God, hallelujah, his arms, amen, is the ultimate stronghold against our enemy. Um, Thank you, God. And so I'm um, going back to Second uh, Corinthians chapter number 10, verse number four. Amen. It, it tells us, hallelujah, that the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. See, the stronghold of God will pull down the stronghold of the enemy. It will destroy everything that the, the enemy is trying to do. It will war against. It will stand on your behalf. It will protect you. Amen. Glory be to God. And so the stronghold of God, hallelujah, protects us. He says, so I will save the Lord. He is my refuge. And in that place, you can pull down every stronghold of the enemy. The presence of God pulls down every stronghold because there is nothing more powerful than the stronghold of the Lord. It is our safe place. It is our security place. Glory be to God. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my garrison, my stronghold the place of my safety. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to trust him because he is my refuge and my safety. He is the place of my protection. Amen. Glory be to God. Um, <laughs> he said, my God in him, I will trust. My God in him, I will trust. And that word trust means to come to a place of such peace and understanding of your safety in God, that it brings you to a place of carelessness, that you so trust in his presence surrounding you, that you become carefree and you become careless. What I mean by careless, I'm not talking about being reckless, amen. I'm talking about being in a place where Second Peter uh, chapter number I mean, excuse me, First Peter chapter number five encourages us to be. It tells us to cast all of our cares upon the Lord because he cares for us. I'm talking about being in that place, amen, when you understand that the, the presence of the Lord is the safest place for you. You begin to trust in his ability to protect you and cover you. And it brings you to a place of being careless. Because in that place, you can cast all your cares of him because, upon him because you know he cares for you. And so it causes you to become carefree. This is what the presence of the Lord can do. And this is what the presence of the Lord will do. Amen. And it will protect you and it will keep you safe. Hallelujah. And I know there are times, amen, when we go um, forward into the scripture in Psalm 91 and we read about all of the things that his presence can do. And I know you might be saying to yourself, but I'm going through. I've been in the presence of the Lord and I'm going through. Can I encourage you, amen, that oftentimes, amen, we are going to experience things in life. We're going to go through hardships in life, amen, but never allow the enemy to put you in a place where you're questioning the ability of God to protect you and keep you safe. Though you are experiencing things, though you are going through things, there are some things that we are appointed to go through. There are some battles, amen, that we are appointed to walk through with our armor on, fully confident in the God that is guiding. There are some things that we are going to experience, amen, but God is not going to allow you to be destroyed by those things that are coming up on. I know the enemy wants you to believe that God has abandoned you and God has forsaken you and that you have no protection or support, but I've come here this morning to let you know that you do return to the presence of the Lord. 
Return to the place, amen, of your greatest victory. Hallelujah. Your greatest warfare, your greatest ability to overcome is in the presence of the Most High God. There is no greater weapon in your arsenal than the presence of God. And so I want to encourage you today to run back into his presence, to run back to that place and repitch your tent. Dwell in the presence of the Lord. Become a, an abider in his shadow. Get there. Because it's there is where your protection and your support is. Regardless of what the enemy is telling you, there is safety in the arms of the Lord. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That is your greatest weapon of warfare. That is the strongest weapon in your your in, in your arsenal in this war. Amen. This spiritual war. Amen. This thing that we are facing, this thing, amen, that we are about to enter into, it is your greatest weapon. The thing that you are coming out of, the thing that you shall overcome, you will do it by the presence of the Lord because it is your greatest weapon and it is the most unpredictable weapon against the adversary because he does not know, he cannot foresee how God is going to deliver you. But God is going to deliver you. Amen. And so I just want to encourage you today to return to the place of your greatest victory. Hallelujah. And that's the presence of the Lord. Become, amen, so anchored in his presence that you know for certain that nothing can move or shake you. Now, it might be uncomfortable because here's the thing about the presence of the Lord. If we go back to Isaiah chapter number six and Isaiah is talking about, amen, in the year that King Uzziah died, he was in the temple, he was in the house, amen, and he saw the train of the Lord fill the temple and he begins to describe this beautiful scene, amen, of seeing the Lord's train fill the temple and then he begins to experience this discomfort. Hallelujah. When you're outside of the presence of the Lord and you're uh, make a decision in your mind to return to that place of your safety, that place of your peace, that place, amen, that kept you anchored. All of the things that attached itself to you while you were out there wandering, while you were trying to find your way, while you were confused and being manipulated in your mind by the adversary, while you were there separated, amen. Uh, there are some things on you and in you, amen, that will begin to be uncomfortable. And so it's going to cause you some discomfort entering back into that place because Isaiah says, he said, I was in the temple and I saw the Lord high and lifted it up and his train filled the temple. And then as he's describing this, he says, but he begins to say, oh God, woe is me. For I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell amongst the people of unclean lips returning to that place, getting into that deeper place of God's presence will always make you uncomfortable because it begins to expose and reveal things that don't belong. And so it might be uncomfortable at first. It might cause you some discomfort. But if you are willing and obedient, if you are willing to hear God, if you are willing to take what God is showing you and not allow the enemy to use it to put you in a place of guilt and shame. If you take it and you do what Isaiah did, fall at the feet of God and say to the Lord, oh God, I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell amongst the people of unclean lips. But he began to cry out in repentance and he cried hallelujah until the Lord cleansed him, purged him. So don't be afraid to return to that place because I know it's going to be uncomfortable at first. It's going to cause you some discomfort. You're going to be uh, experience some uh, confusion in your mind, but that's just the enemy. I want to encourage you to return to the place of your safety. You're going to experience some discomfort. You're going to feel like this isn't for me. You're going to feel like you're going to feel so dirty, but don't let the enemy tell you you're too dirty to return to the presence of the Lord. You're going to feel frustrated with yourself because you're going to ask yourself, how am I seasoned? And and 
I've been serving the Lord this long and how did I find myself in the place that I found myself? Don't allow the enemy to put you in a place of guilt and shame that you begin to beat yourself up to the point that you don't return to the place of your ultimate power, your greatest authority, your greatest warfare, your greatest winning place. Do not let the adversary keep you from returning to his presence. Whatever you got to do, fight to get there because it is your greatest weapon. The presence of the Lord. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Get there. Stay there. And allow God to do what he needs to do in and through you there. And watch him as he handles everything that has been coming up against you and everything that is ahead of you waiting to attack you. God is there. Amen. Well, listen, I love you. I bless God for you. And I'm so thankful for this opportunity to be with you. And I just want to take a moment to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your beautiful children right now, your sons and your daughters that are listening. Father, I pray that they feel your presence. Hallelujah. Through this broadcast, I pray, God, that they are drawn back into a place of restoration and, and, and hallelujah in your presence, that they return to that dwelling place in you under your shadow, that they return to the place of their greatest safety, their greatest, amen, victory and warfare, their greatest, hallelujah, place of joy and peace. May they return, hallelujah, and make use of your presence for it is their ultimate weapon of warfare against the adversary. Lord, I love you. I bless you. I honor you. Touch their mind. Touch their spirit. Touch their soul, God. Touch their hands. Touch their feet. Touch their understanding. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that you have your way. Lord, I love you. I bless you. I honor you. And I thank you now. In Jesus' most precious name, I pray amen and amen and amen. I bless you. I thank God for you. And I pray you have an amazing day in his presence. Remember, your ultimate weapon, your greatest weapon of warfare is the presence of the Lord. Return to that place. Get there. Amen. Not this surface dwelling, not this religious church going. Hallelujah. I'm talking about pitch you a tent in the presence of the Lord. So much so that his shadow over you goes with you everywhere you go to tangible deliverance, to tangible healing, to tangible breakthrough, not just for you, but for those surrounding you. Amen. Well, I bless you in the name of the Lord. Have a wonderful day in his presence. Bye-bye.